And welcome everyone to another episode, Aussie Tech Heads, episode 642, 25th of July, 2019. How are you going? Thanks to Will and Jace for stepping in again last week. Uh, what a great show. What a great show. The week of the moon landing. I've got a little moon landing story coming up later on, so we'll get into that uh, soon. I'm your host, Glenn Goodman, and yes, another week of tech stories, tech news, and uh, some tech history as well. So we're going to bring it all to you. Pretty light on the tech news, I found. I think Jordan's got a fair whack of stories this week. We which is uh, something something different, isn't it? Uh, so more than more than the rest of us, uh, you can reach Jordan if you like, because he's such a legend at uh, Jordan at AussieTechEds.com.au, uh, Joe's at AussieTechEds.com.au, or Joe the Gadget Man at Gmail.com. And I should put your proper email in there, Joe. Might do that this week, so I don't have to read your Gmail one out. Uh, we are brought to you by Start New Company. You can register your company fast, easy, and direct with ASIC. All docs provided, docs held in your account for download at any time later on so the docs i speak of would be things like a constitution the uh, company registration certificate uh, minutes of the meeting and all that sort of stuff and now look you can have a special discount for ath listeners if you need a company you can register your company uh, and have a discount of 20 bucks whoa Uh, you just use the code ath20 at the cart you guys know what to do and uh yeah 20 bucks discount thanks to startnewcompany.com.au and also we're brought to you by Aussie Tech Heads Web Hosting which is ATH Web Hosting uh, athwebhosting.com.au operates SSD drives immediate activation SSLs available domain registration Aussie support easy install WordPress Joomla Drupal and plus a myriad and multitude of other little scripts and goodies and also you can jump into the Fitbit app gallery and go to the Aussie Byte clock face. Uh, what's one of Jace's inventions, the Aussie Byte clock face? And he will give you uh, 33% off. ATH19 is the coupon code there. Just like getting a lot of coupon codes. Uh, we are on the Facebook Live. Hello, Facebook. And if you want to join us, you can call into us. Uh, the phone number is 02801520888. And the meeting room ID... I'm not sure if this is up anywhere. I've got to put this up somewhere. But the meeting room ID is 548-358-6358. I know you won't remember that, so I won't even bother repeating that. Uh, Aussie Tech Heads, uh, what is it? Aussie Tech That's wall to wall, 24-7, back-to-back uh, podcasts from around Australia, and it's all about tech, and they just run continuously back-to-back, uh, 24-7 new shows every Friday. Get us on the socials, facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Head, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. If there's something you want to talk about, drop us a line. You can also find the show notes at aussietechers.com.au forward slash podcast. Oh, let's get into the show. <laughs> let's get into uh, Jordan. How you going, Jordan? I'm good, mate. And you? Yeah, good, thanks. What have you been up to? Uh, just just keeping up with life, as you do. Good, trying, good. Trying, trying to do what you do. Yeah. Um, not much. I've been tinkering a bit with Linux this week, just right. for a bit of something different. I was getting a bit bored. Nice. Always, always dipping my toes into Linux somewhere. Yeah, good. Um, Good to hear. Good to hear. And um, how about you, Joe? Welcome. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, how you been this week? I've been pretty busy this week, Glenn. Still, still working on the house, painting it, and stuff like that. Almost done. Now, I think last time we spoke to you, you were going to Perth to watch soccer. How did that go? Uh, mate, that was an awesome experience. Uh, I got to see my favourite team play. Nice. Uh, they win. Yeah, they ended up winning four 0 which was great. Uh, stayed back for. Um, the interviews that they held up there in the tunnel, oh, as, yeah. um, as I normally do after the game. So that was really good. Yeah, so nice. Yeah, good stuff. And, uh, yeah, so you do it again, no doubt. Oh, no doubt at all. I mean, while I, while I was in Melbourne, I, I did, uh, sorry, uh, Perth, I did find something really interesting, which I posted on my Instagram page, and that was a uh, USB charges on the on buses over there. I did see that on your page, yes. Yeah, and then and how did that say you just sitting away, going for a little drive on up the highway and plug into the seat? That's good. That's right. Yeah. So no, um, uh, you, you plug in your USB into your um, like a little little panel on the side of the uh, the window there, and you can charge up your phone. The only thing I would say is that um, a few a few people did make comment to that, saying that the um, the, the the worries of uh, security when people can you know plug into another Bluetooth device and, and take your data and that. So um, if you are going to do something like that in public, where you pub, where you um, plug in the USB, try and use a charge only cable and not a charger slash um, data cable. Yeah, that's probably a very that's probably a very interesting 
and good point there, Joe. So you can get there is a difference between the charger cable and a data charger cable. How do you know what you've got and how do you know what to do? You, you just uh, have to ask, do you? Well, basically, by looking at it, you can't really tell. Um, you have to try it, or it's on the packaging when you buy the USB cable. It'll either say charge only or charge slash data. Um, and you'll find that um, with the uh, the, the cable, um, you can either check it, check it out and plug it into your computer, and it'll either connect up to your computer and allow you to uh, transfer data and, photo and photos and stuff like that to your computer, mm. or it'll just charge only. So... Um, yeah, just a little tip there. So if you're going to charge somewhere in a, in a public USB charging spot, try and grab just a, 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 a um, charge-only cable. Mm. Yeah, that's a good tip. Good tip. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, so I know uh, Joe and Joe and Jordan uh, will echo on Facebook tonight. I'm sorry. I tried to tweak it since last time, but obviously not tweaked enough. But if you guys can on the Facebook put up with it for a little bit longer this week, that'd be lovely. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go with uh, Inventor is is to cross the English Channel on a jet-powered hoverboard. Now, I don't know if you guys remembered, I don't know when it was, a little while ago. The, he's called the Flying Soldier, and his name is Frankie Zapata, who previously wowed crowds in France when he flew his flyboard, or his little hoverboard thing, over the country's Bastille Day Parade. So he wants to make, he wants to mark the journey... He wants to make the journey over now. He wants to now go over the English Channel on his jet-powered hoverboard. He wants to make the journey to mark the 110th anniversary of Louis Bellarot's first cross-channel airplane flight. So um, this is now Frankie said, I use 3% of the machine's capability on Bastille Day. I'll need 99% for the channel. Won't be easy, and I reckon I have a 30% chance of succeeding. It's not very high odds, is it? I've got a little, no. I've got a little picture here of him on the... On the hoverboard, there he is there. Uh, it won't be easy. Uh, Zapata has said he expects to cross the channel, which ranges in width from 20 to 150 miles, depending on the location, in about 20 minutes. Uh, he said this has made the challenge 10 times more difficult. He said he wants to only refuel once midway uh, instead of twice as he planned. Now, when he was asked about why he, has, he changed it from once two once from twice, he said it's a completely arbitrary and unreasonable decision. <laughs> good on him. Now, this is him on Bastille Day. How good does that look? Uh, his flyboard is powered by five mini turbo engines and can reach speeds of up to 18, 118 miles an hour. That's fast, isn't it? That is uh, that is really fast. That's like about 160k. Mm. Or more. 170k, 175k. Uh, is that right? That's about right, isn't it? 175k. That's far. How would you stay up on that thing? I couldn't even stand on the edge of a cliff without getting tingles in my legs, let yeah. alone standing on that thing up all yeah, the way. Yeah, I know. There. That's bloody crazy. Yeah, so that's uh, that's that's what he's up to. So that's uh, just something nice, short and sweet to, to kick off with this week. Um, now, look, I'll go on to another one because that was a bit short. Because I know Jordan, you're just waiting there. Um, no, to I'm not pounce. waiting. You know, I wanted to butt in before because I was going to say you're always at the start of the show asking us how we are and what we've done this week and how is everything. No one ever stops to ask you, Glenn. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, how I think, are you? What have you done this week, Glenn? How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm very well, thanks. Uh, what have I done this week? Um, what have I done? I've bought a few things on eBay. Satisfied a few, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, a, a few wants and wishes. I bought a uh, Tom Baker scarf, or something like a twelve-foot scarf. Got that for thirty bucks. So nice. um, yeah, I don't know, maybe something I've not always wanted, but you know, you look on fa on eBay every now and then, and you go, "What am I going to look on eBay for?" So I look at the Tom Baker scarf and stuff, and I just buy it. Who cares? Um, what else have I done? Um, oh, I've got a couple more Blu-ray discs that I'm just ripping. To put onto the server, I've I've fixed up my open media vault, so now I've got yeah. user accounts on it. Which oh, you worked it out? Yes, working oh, good. Yeah. It was all to do with the ACLs and uh, just the sharing and the yeah. the um, SMBs and tweaks and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, websites just concentrating on uh, SEO. I've been doing a fair bit of SEO work on websites this week. Yeah. Uh, just to organically get them to rise through the rankings. So, um, I don't know, is that exciting enough? Sounds like you haven't slept. <laughs> it's been a very busy week. 
<laughs> it's been a very busy week. I set up a redundancy DNS server for it's the still going. web hosting. It's, still going. <laughs> it's just crazy. Have you set up any honey pots? No honey pots, Joe. No honey pots. <laughs> no good for the weight. <laughs> Stay clean. Well, you know, like I said, there's not enough hours in a day, is there, really? So. No, there's not. And then I also had the Bazers all due. So Bazers due. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. But anyway, yeah, no, that's life, good. Thank the you. Life yeah. of the tech head, huh? That's right. Yeah, but no, all good. Thanks. I'm going to the. Uh, is it the Gold Coast? Uh, technological hub or something they've got ca- going on down there. It's a, a place where um, I don't know some startups reside. So I'm gonna go there tomorrow with my laptop, just sit in there for a couple of hours, and I don't know, have a chat, and just uh, yeah, put my face around and see what happens. Good. So um, yeah. So that's that's what I've been up to. Is that? <laughs> is that I we could base the whole show on just what you've done for one week. Oh, it's a busy week, I tell you. Busy week. <laughs> busy week. No, good on you. It's nice to just relax, in, isn't it? And- Mm, you gotta that's, fit the podcast hour in there somewhere each week too. Yeah, I know, I know. Like come Friday, and uh, yeah, Friday's a bit of a bit of a relaxed day, I think, after the the, the thrust of the week. So yeah, yeah. just go and uh, yeah, just go to this tech hub, hang out there a bit. Um, probably just come back after that and yeah, keep going with the the SEO and all that sort of stuff. Um, all right, uh, well, all right. Well, let's go on to what were we Your talking next about? Story. No, yes. Well, well, before that, we were going to talk about something just before the show. We started talking about iPhones and Androids, and we thought we'd um, bring it on to the show because it was a, well, I know it's getting a bit of a, a good discussion going because I said that I was getting a bit upset with my Android because, as you know, I've been with Android now for, I don't know, it must be a, a year, come from the Apple success, iPhone success. Um, yeah, look, amongst other things, I just, uh, the notifications uh, I find are pretty poor. On the Android, and you might tell me it's a, a charmy thing. I don't know, but you know, like with uh, say Twitter notifications and Facebook, you know, you could just just get them. They pop up, they disappear, pop up, disappear. I just can't get them to pop up properly. You know, and I just find it really hard. So I don't know what's going on there. But um, what version of Android is running on your phone? Yeah, you know? yeah, the late nine is it? Nine. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. I might have to do a factory reset and just reload. I don't know, but I don't know. Maybe. I'll, I'll put up with it for a little bit longer. I, mean, I know, I know, so many people have to factory reset their apples once in a while too. You know. Yeah, true. It does happen on both sides of the fence. So, but are you, I was. Glenn, are you using the um, authentic uh, Twitter app, or are you using a, a third party app? No, it was the the proper one. But um, right. yeah, you might want to try a different um, a different one. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes they have more options with their notifications. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, not that I'm a big Twitter person, you know, but uh, it's just sometimes, like, you just, I don't know, say you just want to follow a, a hashtag or something for some reason for a little while. So, you know, you go to the trouble of setting it up and it just doesn't notify you. So. I know that in the, in, in the past I've had problems with my notifications sometimes where I've swiped them off and I've turned them off without realising. Mm, yeah. So you've got to go back into settings and switch it. Switch yeah. it back on so you get notifications for those ones, or you silence them, or mm. you hide them without realizing you did it. Um, also, I think uh, for people who don't use Android very often, there's also the um, authentication that you have to provide the security allowance within the the, um, the Android system as well to allow them to come through on some apps. That's right. That's right. Look, I think on the surface, I'd like to go back to the iOS for the the the. It's just more a sleek, sleeker experience, user experience. But then, uh, just talking about it just now, I, I can I remember, you know, you can't send stuff to the Chromecast as easy off the Apple. You can't do this with the Apple. You can't do that with the iPhones. And there is a lot of restrictions, but I think the, 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 the debate you and I were having earlier is why would you want to spend... Because you said to me, if you're going to spend all that month, that much money, why would you be better off to buy an iPhone? I thought to myself, well, if you're going to spend all that mon- that much mm. money, why can you spend it on an S- a Galaxy S10 or a, or a Google Pixel? What's wrong with only spending that much money on, on an Apple and not on something else. Well, what I was going yeah, and, and I, I was That's gonna say, well, I, I was thinking of more about staying maybe two generations behind. <laughs> so, because I came from a 6S, so maybe maybe I'll go to an 8. You know, like maybe, I don't know how much they are, but say if they're the same as a cheap Android, it might be worthwhile just for a sleeker user experience. But I don't know, because now that you get into it, I'm remembering all this stuff and I'm remembering 
because uh, Kim's got a 6S still and she she sends her music to the speakers and the way that it all works is that it's going through the phone so her battery's you know running down while she's listening to the music because she's using airplay which is using the phone more than whatever it doesn't just doesn't offload it to the speaker so i'm remembering all these things so i'm right you know i'm not going that turns me off too, not going back hey yes. okay. not going back i'm i'm decided again <laughs> another thing that turns me off is is the apps the comparison if you pull up an end if you pull up an app the exactly the same app if you pull up that app on the apple and then you pull up that app on the android you'll find them different mm. like like the android one might have more settings or more toggles than the apple one would have because it's allowed to do a little bit more things like it's the same app but just mm. it sometimes can have a bit more and sometimes it can go the other way as well but more often than not i find there's more usability in the same apps on android than there is on apple mm. just a yeah. thought at the same time what i've noticed that when um the Apple apps normally work a lot better, a lot more smoother. Um, not that I have an Apple phone. I'm just saying that from people that I've experienced before, none of them ever complain about any of the way that the user interfaces work or anything like that. They're all quite happy with the way that works. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, look, I've, I've remembered the problem, so, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm sticking with the... <laughs> Maybe I should buy a, a lower version, you know, Samsung or something. Maybe that's the ticket. Maybe uh, you know. Look, I think if you're going to spend the money, don't don't half-ass it. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, if you're uh, well, the other thing as well is that if you're going to go back to an iPhone, I wouldn't go to version eight. I'd go right to the, the Just version. Go, to, yeah, go to the top X, XR or something like that as as a minimum. Mm. Get it on a phone plan, pay it off monthly or whatever, <laughs> and just do it. I'll think about it. it. I'll think because, about you know, it. you'll go to an 8 or something and then you'll find that the software update will come out and it'll be slow again, you know? Mm. Well, another thing, just moving off that then for a minute, uh, oh, for forever, <laughs> it's uh, just something yeah, it's that come to my mind, <laughs> is I was uh, down the library, the Gold Coast Library. I don't know if your guys' libraries are like this. Uh, oh, I don't have the pamphlet with me. I think I chucked it out. I don't think I've been to a library in years, mate, so I couldn't compare it. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Hang on. I'm Usually my library is Google. I'm going to go through the bin. Hang on. I'll find it. Here we go. If I, <laughs> I'm in the bin. Now, there's something you're not going to see Glenn do on a podcast very often. Uh, uh, so Scaring through the bin. This is the July edition of our local library book. Now, did you know, now, I don't know, th- as I said, I don't know if this just happens to your library and uh, or other people's libraries, but I was looking through this book and... Did you know that they've got like all the encyclopedias are online and searchable and what and whatnot? So you don't have to rely on Wikipedia. You know, on that some people call it fakeopedia. Uh, you can go to the Encyclopedia Britannica's and all that sort of stuff. It's online. Yep. Uh, you can go and the Gold Coast Library's got all these free streaming on free streaming video uh, apps and stuff. And you can stream videos. Now, some of them are BBC documentaries and um, Discovery Channel documentaries and all this sort of stuff. So this Canopy app uh, that I'm just holding up a picture of here, that's only one of the apps. They've got four four apps uh, that will stream stuff if you're a member of the library. So, you know, maybe if you haven't been to the library for a while, maybe go and check them out and see what else they can offer you these days. Very good. Is that something you can only get at the library? Can't you download those apps on your own phone? Well, I think... Uh, well, you probably could, but I think look, I hadn't sussed it out ex- ex- uh, entirely. But you might need to log in. It says here for this one here, go to the the city of goldcoast.com.au forward slash online library. Click on music and film to begin watching. Log in with your library details. So, but it's the same as uh, you know lynda.com. The, you know, the place where you go to watch all your videos, learn your videos. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I know that one, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're in Queensland, well, you can get free access to lynda.com by joining the Queensland State Library. So it must be something similar like that. So so all you do is you join the Queensland State Library, head back over to Linda, you're in. That easy. sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, my, it's, it's worth sussing out the, the things at your local library. Why not? We're all paying for them, so you might as well, might as well take advantage. Uh, all right, well, let's get back into some some real stuff. Uh, Jordan, you got a few tonight. Let's 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 get you going. Um, I did have one I brought up earlier. I was trying to shorten in a word document. I'll do that one first. Um, uh, where are we? 
so this is not really a news article. This is just more of a, another topic of discussion. It's just uh, jobs of the future, a, a strange, terrifying, and and don't that that don't even exist yet. Jobs of the future, Does right? Yep. Yes. Yep. So right, <laughs> I'm kind of catching up to myself. Right now, we seem to be coming to the grips with the idea that years from now, many uh, current jobs that we take for granted will have transformed beyond recognition, or worse, cease to exist. But uh, but what kind of jobs will replace them? So this is just kind of a bit of an article about some ideas of what uh, what jobs might come up in the future. And the Griffith University and, and Deakin University teamed up with Ford in Australia in an attempt to tackle that question. And they came up with 100 possible jobs that could exist in the future. And some of them make sense, some of them don't. But um, I think one of them was um, take a take the the the, the de extension geneticist for example is is one job that um you know you'd look for in the future um ethical hacker is another one but but and but some of the other ones that they list a bit further down are, are quite amusing um there's one that says how about a a, a job as a child assistant uh bot programmer right. uh, this, this study expects humanoid robots will help children play safely these bots can be personalised and programmed to align with family preferences, values and rules. Um, they read nursery rhymes, personalised stories, teach basic numeracy and language skills, develop general knowledge and the support of learning and spatial skills and use coding uh, games to develop digital literacies. Um, there was also a mention of, uh, of cricket farmers as a potential for future <laughs> jobs. Makes sense because food shortages are a real issue and crickets are a great source of protein. I've heard <laughs> that. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. I think that there's a lot of people that are eating fried crickets these days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and how about memory optimizer, a job that sounds like something straight out of Total Recall? Um, yeah. A recall, sorry. Uh, they will augment people's working memory capacities through digital implant technologies. You know? Nice. So these are some of the jobs of the future that we, we should be looking towards. But yeah, as for the crickets, I don't think I'm into that. No, but what about the, was it the species revivalist, extinct species revivalist? Yeah, yeah. well, that's what they were saying, that the, the de-extinction geneticists, for example, scientists are already looking to find ways to protect an extinct species or carefully bring back animals mm. that could help provide ecological balance. Oh, well, there you go. Very good. And, you know, I've always said, We've lost our checkout chicks, you know, haven't we? And, yep. You know, the white collar jobs are, are, are kind of next, aren't they? With, um, you know, bus drivers and lawyers and surgeons and oh, all those sorts of things that are going to be taken over by artificial intelligence. Well, right what are we? What are we? What is the human race going to do? Just going to lay around in the sun all day, getting yeah. fed with grapes no, by no robots, food, eating crickets. Yeah. <laughs> You know, oh, look. So we're super overpopulated and their jobs are just getting taken away by artificial intelligence and robotics. They'll, I mean, they'll, they'll become a, a, a stage, I reckon, it'll it'll just stop. Like, people will be craving the, the personal touch, the personal interaction. Like, oh, they will. You know. They could never... Re yeah. Yeah, like, I, I guess, you know, you don't want to go and see a doctor if it's going to be a robot or just look at a screen or a camera and then, and then just have it go, this is what's wrong with you. Like, you know, you want the personal interaction. And yeah, yeah, well, if you're lying in the hospital in in bed, I think you still want to get the, the you know the hot nurses coming in and sorting us all out, don't you? you know? That's right, so, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to say goodbye to that. Uh, you know, all right, good stuff. Um, but but yeah, you know, I've I've said it for years. I've always thought that tradie jobs are going to be the hot jobs of the future. I've always said because you know there's mm. you're not going to get many robots going out to job sites, wiring up houses. You know. Um, well, I suppose you could. I suppose you and, could just and plumbing and all those sorts of things, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I guess like you just probably could get tools, automated tools that would help the the plumber and the tradie and the whatever. But uh, yeah, you can't go. I don't, look, it'll never happen. It'll, I don't think it'll, that'll happen. Maybe you're right. Yeah, it's around the corner. And someone said, lawyers, you can't get a better better research in law than from artificial intelligence. But can can AI reason? I don't think they can't reason. Like, you know, like if you're a lawyer, don't you have to sort of, you know, balance the probability and maybe and all this sort of stuff and, you know, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's definitely one to keep the mind ticking. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll definitely see. What do you think, Joe? AI taken over? I Eventually, I think it will. Um, but I have to agree with what Jordan was saying, that there's nothing like a human touch, you know, 
and even today you'll, you'll hear people with, with some different stories and different opinions saying to get back to your basics you know give someone a call rather than send them a text message or send them yeah. a, a Facebook chat or whatever just give them pick up the phone and give them a, a call mm. yeah I agree it'll it'll come full circle it'll just everything everything goes around and it'll come back to where it started you watch maybe with a bit but more you know, bit of help but you know you look at it you know many years ago when we started making cars for example you know you'd have all the parts and, and everything come to the to the big warehouse or a factory and all the parts would go in one end and the car would come out the other and yeah. you'd have all these these people in there bolting everything together and by the time it gets in it's done now they've got all these big robotic arms and machines that put all these cars together so what's to say that the next evolution isn't going to be more than that yeah oh yeah you know, well, i mean look at surgeries being done with art mm. with, with computers and, and things now like microscopic surgeries done with computers yeah i think like like as as history has shown like yeah certain jobs do fall off but those jobs are replaced by 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 different jobs uh, uh, robot maintenance maybe car assembling robot arm maintenance personnel yeah and all that mm. sort of stuff so there's got to be someone to clean up after the robots drop these bolts that's right exactly exactly uh all right joe what's um what do you want to talk about i was just going to say just on the artificial intelligence um on my um, what's it called uh, instagram page i got tagged into a uh, a, a, um, a link that has something to do with artificial intelligence and uh, the medical field oh yeah and i had a quick look at it and it's and it's got to do with little you know devices that people put into their bodies that uh, monitor your heartbeat, your your temperature, um, and all sorts of things. With um, with that in mind, they um, they can then determine how what's your overall health and things like that. Mm. Right. They know if you're going to have a heart attack 20 minutes before you have one. So, yeah, right. Something like that. So yeah, there are benefits, but at the same time, where there's a benefit, there's also something that's not so much of a benefit, and that is, um, you know, you get these insurance companies who get hold of this data and um, you know, employers who's looking at um, you know, employing you. Oh, there's data leaking, yeah. yeah. Right, that sort of stuff. And that's that's the negative part of all the artificial intelligence. Mm. Uh, so, you know. But when you go shopping down at, down at the supermarket, do you, do you go through the through through the checkout or do you go through the, the, the self-serve checkout? No, I hardly ever use the self-serve check, uh, self checkout. I always go to a... Uh, a normal checkout and you know check out chick or check out guy or whatever you want to, whoever, whoever's there yeah yeah good on, you. good on you for sticking up for those jobs that's what i'm talking about the jobs that's what worries me the jobs of the future mm. Mm. all right joe um where, where are you going to take us well you know this week here i saw this interesting article um that said that ruku um is testing its own wi-fi extender to improve streaming reliability um, now, I'm not sure what difference it makes to a normal Wi-Fi extender, but apparently Roku is making a Wi-Fi extender. They call it the Roku Relay, the Roku. You know, it's like yep. Roku. If, for those who don't know, is a little Android box-based uh, system where it's got its own little operating system, and uh, it's got a HDMI out, and you use it like a little Android box, like Android TV box. Yeah. Um, which is meant to improve the wireless connection inside a home and to improve the wireless reliability of uh, any streaming um, that goes from the router to your Roku box. Um, it hasn't actually been officially announced yet at the moment, but it's currently doing some testing with um, people from um, you know general uh, outside users outside the company. Mm. So they're seeing how good this device works. Yeah, the Telstra T-Box is um, Roku. Exactly. Yes. That, that's sort of device there. Now, I'm, 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 I'm saying I'm, they're saying here that they're they're gearing this sort of uh, Wi-Fi extended to the Roku um, devices only at the moment. Basically, what it is, it's a little um, white gadget box that plugs into your PowerPoint um, um, and sits along the wall. And and the, and the instructions say that it's supposed to be used on Roku devices only to improve the Wi-Fi connection. Um, it doesn't actually say whether the devices can be connected, other devices can be connected to it, but um, I'm guessing, you know, this is the part that I was saying before. You don't know whether it's, you know, you could actually use any device to do that. Mm. Uh, uh, so, um, 
apparently the market, it's going to be marketed as a uh, an extension of the Riku player, and um, the manual says that it's supposed to be connected between the Hi-Fi, uh, so between the the Wi-Fi and and the and the router. So yeah, okay. I don't know, what do you guys reckon? It's a good idea, or well, I guess if it's going to make the thing work properly. So um, yes, so so what are they saying is that so people are saying that it's the the, the say their their Roku's in the bedroom and their routers in the lounge room, and then yeah, streaming to it is getting a bit flaky. So they need they need to boost the signal. Is it, that's the problem? Yeah, there. and this is what I'm wondering. I'm wondering whether you could actually pick up a standard Wi-Fi, well, why couldn't you? Um, you know, booster or something like that, and use that rather than using this. I don't see that much of a difference there. Yeah, um, no, I, I can't see why you wouldn't go the normal route either. Like, you know, if you're going to, I don't know how much this thing's going to cost, but if you're going to spend money to extend the Wi-Fi signal for your Roku box, why wouldn't you just spend the same money on something that's extend the Wi-Fi signal to everything? You know, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Or maybe it's like one of those things, it, would it be something similar, you know, with Telstra's got those uh, phone... Oh, I don't know. You you plug them into the power point, and then you plug the phone into it, and then you can wirelessly connect. Oh, uh, the one that runs along with electricity. You mean is that the one? No, no. Because with the with the, uh, the the MBN, you know, the Telstra gives you their modem, and you plug your phone into the or into the router box that they give you. But then if you've got the old style phones in other other outlets around the house, you can buy a device that'll wirelessly connect back to the Telstra. Um, router base, and then and that will then you can still use your old phone. I don't know if you've seen those. Yep. Does that make I, sense? I don't have NBN on my home yet, so I don't know. Yep. Yeah, you um. Well, I use an old phone with the Telstra one, but often people have said to me, if you take it, the the cable from the back of the Telstra one and you plug it into your wall where you would normally get your phone line from, mm. you kind of you can kind of put the phone back through all the other sockets in your house plug your phone into those sockets and they'll come back to the... Did that work for you? Well, I don't see... I haven't done it but uh, into the wall because I haven't needed to. My phones are all wireless anyway, so I don't mm. need to have a separate... I tr- everywhere yeah, I tried that. I didn't don't see work. why it wouldn't work. But I tried it. I didn't. I couldn't get it to go. I put it, I put it back into the wall and then tried it on a, another phone on another outlet and it wouldn't, didn't work. It'd just be wiring configuration. Wire, Surely you could wire that up yourself. Glenn, you could work that out. Oh, yeah, if there's something simple like that, you could. But look, yeah. for these little devices, if you've got an old phone that's not, um, you know, whatever it is, not wi fi up or whatever, if you've got one of the old so standard same. phones, you can buy a little device from Telstra, they're, they're 40 bucks or something, and you plug it into the PowerPoint to give it power, you push the, the like the WPS button on it, and then on yeah. the Telstra So box, what it is, is the, yeah. And then plug your old phone into this little thing you've just plugged in the PowerPoint and then it then that little PowerPointy thing wi fis into the, the phone router. Yeah, thing. so what it is is it sounds like it's it's basically just because you can go down the Telstra shop and you can buy the, the wireless phones that connect straight to your VoIP in your in your um in your in your modem. Mm. Yeah, so you, you you don't need to have a cable. That's right. And all that all that does is it's it's probably just like a little Wi Fi thing that's going to connect to the VoIP, that's all. Mm. And then you plug your phone into it, then it connects to the VoIP in the in the modem and you use that as a normal, yeah. Yeah. Like having an engine box or, a, or you know, those VoIP boxes that you can get from different places. Yeah. Um, oh, jeez, I just got a, a note. The sharks are on the night. I forgot all about them. Oh, jeez, what's going on? I'll have to, um, we'll have to finish up quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> I forgot all about that game. Uh, okay, let's let's go. I'm going to start speaking fast now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, moon landing this week. Uh, so here's another bit of a story for the for the moon landing uh, geeks. Uh, there's a engineers restore audio recordings from the Apollo 11 mission. So a college professor of speech communication wanted his students to study a prime example of teamwork. So the U.S. government sent them to NASA, uh, who apparently are notorious for recording everything it does. NASA would then send Dr. John Hansen of the University of Texas at Dallas to the Johnson Space Center in Houston and a room with a bunch of old tape reels on which were recorded the mission control audio of Apollo 11. 
Now, this was the first time many of the students were listening to people who literally made history. Uh, a lot of behind the, the scenes conversations and all that sort of stuff, they said. Now, the recordings were contained on a special 30 track tapes. And they were being recorded on some long forgotten machine called a sound scriber. Each person was recorded to their own track. Hansen and his students had to fix the machine and connect it to a computer to speed along what ended up to be more than 19,000 hours worth of audio. So Hansen's team was able not to just digitize the recordings, but with the use of algorithms, provide transcripts, nothing. Uh, noting who was speaking and in terms of date and time. So these results and the, the, the end of this project was turned over to NASA. And it's going to be included in the NASA site uh, called exploreapollo.org. Now exploreapollo.org, there's not much really going on at exploreapollo.org at the moment. But uh, I guess if you're, in, if you're into the space sort of stuff, I'm just trying to get a web page up here for you. If you're into that all sort of stuff, just keep bookmark this page because uh, looks like a lot of good things are going to come along. Uh, so look, it'd be good to be able to search and listen to some of these really, really old uh, recordings. Well, they're 50 years old or whatever. And also that one doesn't even work, Apollo 11. But yeah, but keep an eye on that on that one. Uh, exploreapollo.org. Oh yeah, and there we go. Look, you get some nice little little pictures. You get some some lunar landing sail, uh, some sound bites. The the moonwalk soundbite the touchdown soundbite yeah there's 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 already a little bit there so it's there for your enjoyment uh all right that's good i'm going we're moving quick now now the sharks are coming on <laughs> what else you got jordan has joe got any more oh. i've got a little one here um just to be aware that microsoft are making some changes to the windows 10 updates um usually they give you two updates of uh like uh, operating system updates, like major updates, and normally they give you some minor updates. Uh, but as of next year, the company is shifting to uh, two updates a year. Uh, they're doing a, uh, a major, one major update and one minor update. Um, so the, the major update's gonna be in the spring and the, the minor update will be in the fall. All right. Uh, so, yeah, so rather than giving you know two updates a year, they're only gonna give one. Um, but of, of course, the security patches and whatever, whatever else are going to come out as, as required. Yes. Well, yes, hopefully. Oh, that's that's not going right. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, so Microsoft are just tinkering around still with all that sort of updates and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, look, two major ones. I noticed, like, I turned this... There's a computer behind me over there, and... Uh, I turned it on, it's only been off for two months, and then the first time I turned it on, oh, updates, and they're slow, and you think, right, I should have turned this on two hours before I really needed to use it. <laughs> you know, it's just crazy. But, um, yeah, but I yeah, guess that's what happens. Way. It always updates when you don't want it to. Yeah, and and that was just and because it just updates, you've got no control over it, and it, and it, just, it was just slow, you know, it was just slow while it did it. And, um, yeah, so it just, you know, just, oh, I didn't like it. But, um yeah, so Microsoft's always been playing around with that, aren't they? But um, I don't know. I guess it's, I don't know, two a year. That's all right with me. Push. <laughs> I yeah. hate it when you get to work and you've got the, you got to turn the computer on for some reason and you can't, you're running, you're running late. You get there, you turn it on and it says it's updating. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right if you have to go to work and get it done. Have a bit of a chat for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. I've got another Microsoft one if you want to add to that. Yep. I just, I just, and I just sent you the link in the chat so you could bring up a picture of what it looks like in the uh, the Zoom chat. But it just says Microsoft re reveals new Windows 10 start menu in accidental internal leak. Oops. Ooh. Uh, Microsoft today accidentally released an internal only version of Windows 10 to users. Sorry, to testers, revealing a new start menu design. The software giant distributed Windows 10 build 18947, uh, meant for internal Xbox development to Windows insider testers using a 32-bit device. It's an internal, internal only build from the company's um, Canary branch, is that how you say it, Canary? And yet Microsoft published it to all its Windows 10 testers whether they're uh, in release preview or fast ring or even slow ring testing the build is no longer available. Uh, thankfully, it was released only on 32-bit systems, which aren't widely used, but embarrassing for Microsoft. Uh, the internal build includes uh, 
so the internal build appears to include a start menu design that's very early in testing without Microsoft Live's tiles taken out oh. the tile. Yeah, it's okay. something Microsoft is testing internally for Windows Lite, but it's not clear whether the Windows 10 will fully drop live tiles in the start menu anytime soon. This new build also includes a, a GIF search tool within the emoji picker for Windows 10. So that's interesting. I, You know, I wouldn't care if they got rid of live tiles. I'd no. say. Do, does anyone really take any notice of them? Like, when do you... Uh, I never use them. No, but I guess if you're on a, if you're on a touch device, you might. If you're on a Surface... It might be nice, but if you're on a PC, you never see them unless you're in the touch section. Fine, mm. but in the um, in the desktop mode, yeah. Well, you never see them. When do you see them? When you push the start button, that's it. You know, I find it even difficult sometimes to even find what I'm looking for. I open up the start menu, and the live tiles are so busy all the time that I can't decipher which ones which. Yeah. Yeah, like I, you're looking for the app store and you find yourself you're looking at a Spotify icon because it's got all the flashing pictures on the front and you realise, hang on, no, that's a, that's the app store, it's not Spotify or it's, mm. you know, it's... I think when you're like, on a, yeah, on a, on a desktop, well, I don't know, you just, I just start button and then start typing what I want to load and that's, that's, what I that's do. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then even on a touchscreen one, I usually hit the little button up the left that pulls out from the left and shows you a list of all the apps in just their icons and right. I usually just scroll through those because I can't be bothered looking at all the tiles going which is which mm. I've got Did everything Windows, um, Did either of you ever use the Windows Mobile? Oh, back no. in the day that used to annoy me Windows Mobile yeah Well because I'm, I'm thinking you know the live tiles I used to have Windows Mobile I think it was 8 at the time or 7 or something like that and I, I actually used to like the live tiles you could pick up your phone Tap the screen, and it'll say, "Okay, uh, this is the time. This is the um, the weather." Um, hmm. If you had the app with the, um, uh, say, you had the sports app, it would just give you a, a countdown of running the time. You could see that up on the on the on the on the thing scrolling across, and and uh, little things like that. I used to actually like um, those live tiles for that sort of thing. I think on the phone, I think you're right. I think I'd enjoy it more, but you never see it on a desktop. So what's the point? I just think that they get too busy. I like the live tiles. I like the weather and the, the, the obvious updates of, you know, you have one new mail from and they give you the subject line or whatever. Mm. But when they start flashing pictures and everything mm. else, it yeah, just it's the gets, blur. It gets, it, everything just becomes a mess and mm. you can't kind of... You know you can edit all that, don't you? You can get rid of that part. You can turn off the live stuff. Mm. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what's happened to this uh, to the Canadian Police Department. Uh, which when they <laughs> had to issue an apology last Friday, same way. yes. Well, they probably got so much going on on their little uh, uh, Facebook live screen that they're pushing things, pushing things. Don't know what they're pushing, and something pretty bad's happened. So they've had to issue an apology after they they were doing a live stream, and the was it the police commissioner or uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted police officer who was speaking about or doing a news conference live about a double murder uh, all of a sudden had cat ears and whiskers on her face <laughs> so not good <laughs> not good uh, really? yeah there's a little picture here look like if you're on the on the video there she is with the little cat e- cat ears and whiskers oh, no yeah, when the filter activated, a sergeant with the Royal Canadian Man and Police suddenly appeared on computer screens with caddies on her head, whiskers on her face, uh, and as she Someone spoke... Someone would have got fried for that. Yeah, as she spoke to reporters about the slayings of a young couple. The cat filter had apparently been on an automatic setting, uh, the police said, uh, uh, Friday on Twitter, and they were working to fix the problem, and a video of the news conference was later made available without the filter, thankfully. <laughs> yes. But yeah, so that's when uh, technology can come in and... Uh, but yeah, bite that's you. A, that's a cracker. Yeah, so there. Yeah, yeah, that's the level of the stories we've got this week. <laughs> well, I've got one that's kind of similar as well. Our world's best facial recognition for AI still struggle to tell the difference between black people and white people. Right. Evidence, evidence continues to mount that facial recognition systems, some of which are already deployed by police forces worldwide, uh, worldwide struggle to tell apart, uh, black people apart. Research conducted by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the US tested AI software from more than 50 companies across the globe, and experts from the government agencies found that up to a tenfold difference in error rate when it came to correctly identifying black women 
compared to white women. Oh, so, um, yeah, I misunderstood. When you... And white men um, were found also challenging, not as much right. as the white and black women. Yeah, right, I get it. Yeah, because I think you, we were just having a quick chat about this before the show, and I thought it was... Uh, I thought the app was working as intended because it wasn't differentiating between the black and a white guy, but it's 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 not distinguishing the differences between black men. Is that well, what? black and white men or black and white women? Oh, yeah, okay. So the, it is it is across the the. Oh, it, it's just the, I think it's just the color. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Right. So it is. So well, then, as far as you know, it's um working as it should. Then. Uh, isn't it supposed to be colour blind? Aren't we supposed to be colour blind these days? Well, that's what I was saying and at the start of the show. It's yesterday, kind of a, it's a bit of a laugh, aren't we? Supposed to treat everybody as equal, and so yeah. if AI can do it, so can yeah. we. Well, it, it's working as it, working as yeah. planned. So that's good. Sorry. That's good. Um, so that was just another law and order one. I thought I'd add to yours since you had a good segue from the last one. All right, that's very good. Your segues. Well, do you, do you reckon I can do another good segue? Into <laughs> link, link them all together. Yeah, why not go for it? <laughs> I'll try to. Well, you know, it's not it's not only uh, that can you have the cat whiskers and that on and and whatever, but uh, you can also you could watch Foxtel with cat whiskers and and your little ears if you wanted to, because uh, Foxtel as you probably have heard it's been pretty much in the news a lot, so it probably won't go too much into this. But uh, they're revamping its its menu on the IQ4, uh, going to give you a slick new deal, and it's also going to incorporate a Netflix button on the remote. But, uh, you know, uh, when you sort of get into it, it's not really... Uh, What's the what's the point? Like, well, yeah, but what's the point? Like, you still got to pay for Netflix. Additionally, uh, it's just gonna you're just gonna have a button on the remote where you can just push it and it comes up. Why? Like, so big we whip. also need to have a button for Hulu, Netflix, Disney, um, you know, and Apple plus, TV, and where, yeah, and all the other ones, you know. And isn't it the idea if you had a like Netflix? It's like you don't want to sit there with a remote, just going through the letters. You know how you do it on the remote with the arrow, 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 and do, 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 do. but apparently the remote's going to be you can speak to it as well. So that could be that could be all right. But I never got too much out of that story to tell you because it's been around a bit, and um, I don't really care to be honest. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there you go. I tell you what, there was a speaking of Netflix, there was a hell of a lot of announcements from Marvel this week. Right, what like what? Well, of all their new, um, all their new sci-fi movies that are coming out in the next kind of you know phase, their phase four as they call it over the next few years, mm. and I'm pretty excited they've put Blade on there. Right, okay. Remember Blade? I do. I know the. I don't know if I've seen the movie, but I remember the Wesley Snipes, the vampire movie. Any of the sword, ah, yes, 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 yes. I think I have well, seen that one. Yeah. Yes, brought that to Marvel. Mm. Pretty excited about that. I can't. I can't say the actor's name. I've never been able to. That's taken taken the role. He's a two time Academy Award winner. He was the leading star in, um, what was the movie Green 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 Book? Was it Green Book? And he mm. was in. He was also the bad guy in Alita. Did you ever see Alita? No, I don't think so. No. No. Have a look at those. I can't say the guy's name. Maybe I could IMDb. But while you while you're talking about movie people and movies, did you hear that the Ruta Hager died? He was in the uh, is it Blade Runner? So he's no longer with us. A uh, lot of response. So uh, obviously, <laughs> thank you. No one cares. Uh, all right. Well, uh, what what have you got? Another one, Joe? I'm trying to look for uh, the guys. Is there anything I've got this week on uh, new and upcoming gadgets? Yes. He's, um. Of all things, a remote control for your dog. Um, Excellent. You can now uh, provide uh, haptic feedback from their vests. You know, you can give them feedback by their vest. Right. So, you know, you know each, each, each time the phone rings, you, you, you reach for your pocket for a notification. Well, researchers at uh, Ben Gordon uh, University in Israel have a harness that, with, um, that has the same reflection action to create what is essentially a remote control dog that uh, receives silent commands and signals through a vibrating vest that it wears. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so as an alternative to handlers um, having to reach for a megaphone or rely on a loud mm. whistle um, to remain in contact with the dog, uh, that's ventured into territories that are you know, sometimes too dangerous for humans to go into. The researchers um, reach for... Um, at the BGU Robotics Lab, have um, upgraded a, a lightweight mesh canine vest 
uh, with vibrating motors that touch the sides of the and backs of the dog. Yeah, nice. Uh, to provide varying levels of haptic feedback so that you know uh, the dog can feel it. Yeah, that's that's probably not a bad way of doing things. Like, yeah, because like you could say, um, if it's doing the wrong thing, like if it's going uh, over to the cat, you can give it a buzz or something, <laughs> and 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 teach it not to. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah, good. So because the the vest is wirelessly operated um, with a remote that you have, um, I guess through your phone, or I'm not mm. sure how they actually do it at the moment, whether they use a phone or whether they use, actually use a, a proper remote. Um, the dog's still able to receive commands even when they're out of sight of their handler. Um, and the research says that they are found that uh, um, they respond, uh, respond better to the haptic um, feedback cues that they get from their vest um, rather than their vocal commands. Yeah, right. So that requires about an hour of training to learn and, um, and to master each particular one. Oh, yeah. yeah, good stuff. Yeah, good one, Joe. Um, now, Eric has, has joined us on the Facebook, and he obviously is a Marvel fan because he's just sent me all the, the he list. He sent you a link. What's the, the guy's name? Uh, is it Mahishla? I can never say it. Mahishla Ali. Who's that? I've never heard of him. Who's that? You can never pronounce it. Well, uh, the, the, apparently the releases are Thor, Love and Thunder or something. Hawkeye. That's series about... Yeah, Hawkeye's Ma- coming. Is that about MASH? Something like that? Uh, then what's that? Multiverse of Madness? Was that Loki? Oh. Yeah, Loki's getting a TV series. Yeah, right. Sh- I've never even heard of half of this stuff. So you Sh- haven't watched. You, you tell me you haven't watched. Um, you haven't watched Avengers. Uh, how many are there? Oh, you got to get with it. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't watched Game of Thrones and you haven't watched oh, Marvel. Yes, I ha- I'm into Game of Thrones now. I started oh, watching it. Finally. Yep. Yeah, I'm you're up, a bit behind the eight ball. I'm up to season four. It's great. I love it. Yeah, well, uh, there's, you know, there's heaps of Avengers to watch. There's Captain Marvel. There's so much going on. You missed it all. Yeah, well, I've started watching. Uh, I, I hear you in my head, Jordan. <laughs> I've started. I've watched. Uh, I can't even remember what it was. The one where Superman was dead. They had to bring him back to life. <laughs> Um, well, that's DC, not Marvel. Yeah, well, that's it. So you right. your first lesson. Okay. <laughs> right. And I just saw a short, I just saw a, a preview uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, of the Superman actor, and I don't know his name off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. No, neither do I. Uh, but he's now got a TV show coming out. But it's not su- not Superman, it's something else, so I can't remember the name of that either. So I don't know what's going to happen to him in the future. Mm, yes. Uh, yes, Eric, that's right. I only watch Doctor Who. Yeah, Doctor Who, that's it. <laughs> and the Sharks. <laughs> I suggest you get on to Iron Man and get started. You know, right. Captain America, start at, the, start at the bottom, work your way up, <laughs> and uh, by the time you get to Captain Marvel, you'll be in love with the whole the whole thing. Right. And then you can look out for Blade. I'm so excited Blade's coming out. That's one of my all-time favourite movies, Blade. Mm. Yeah, look, I enjoyed the, the Superman one, so we'll... You know, we'll see how we go. Now, Superman's DC. So, have you watched? Um, have you watched uh, what's it called Aquaman? That's DC. That's part of that. No, group. I've only I've only seen is the Avengers. I don't Jason know. Jason Momoa. He was in that Superman one I watched. Who wasn't he? That that big dude Momoa was that him in the Super? No, he was in. He's Aquaman. He was in Stargate back in the day. He was Stargate yeah. Atlantis. Oh, I got no idea. But uh, yeah, so I don't get time. But anyway, uh, look, we'll finish off this week with our trip into the tech. What happened this week in tech history? Now you might not know that it was in on July twenty fourth, nineteen fifty, was the first launch from Cape Canaveral. Uh, it was a bumper eight. It was it, and was a captured German V two modified with a U.S. Army Corporal second stage. Whatever that means. That's all gobbledygook. I don't understand that. But uh, look, there it is. There, get rid of that green thing how do I get rid of that green one there we go <laughs> I'm good at this aren't I there we go that's the first rocket apparently launched 1950 that's big whoopie do now uh, there's a July 23rd 1985 does anyone know what this is there we go it is and those yes, on the audio are probably going Amstrad computer it is a Commodore Amiga Amiga. Oh, I thought it, I thought it was a Mac Pro. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Might be faster than a Mac Pro. <laughs> now, the Commodore introduced on July 23rd, 1985, introduced its Amiga personal computer, also known as the Amiga 1000 or the A1000. Featured a multitasking windowed operating system, colour graphics, and stereo sound, among other features. Ahead of its time, it was hailed as back then. So, uh, yeah, there you go, the, the old Amiga. So that's that one, and also that starts. That just starts off another whole debate for me. I have debates with people all the time over um, where the word PC comes from. Everyone thinks that PC is not Mac. It's not. It's oh, personal, it's yeah, it's a, a personal, personal computer. computer. Yeah, and you what tell it, me Mac's not a computer and it's not personal. Oh no, I thought you said where did it come from. No, everyone's like debates about a PC is Windows and a Mac is Mac. Oh, right. Yeah, no. I get people saying to me that a, that an iPad is not a tablet. Yeah. A tablet is, is Windows and Android and an iPad is Apple. They're, they're different, but it's still a tablet, isn't it? Yeah, like everything's a laptop. But Everything's a laptop. <laughs> there's laptops. There's no, notebooks because laptop is a brand. Yeah. So you, you can't you, you can't tell. You, you're not allowed to say that the, the MacBook Pro is a laptop. It's a It's a... Notebook or something. It's it's not a laptop. Is they it? stopped because calling them laptops apparently because um. Well, it's you trademark. Use a, a, a laptop on your lap. Yeah. Right. That's okay. They started calling them notebooks. Right. Right. Um, well, if it's not sitting on your lap and it's on your desk, I suppose it's a desk top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also. So, is 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 Mac a desktop computer? It is, isn't it? So well, it is. That's right. Which is also a PC, a personal computer. So mm. uh, the ni- July 21, 1999, Apple introduces the iBook laptop. There you go. Talking about laptops, the iBook laptop. There we go. That's that, well, they were ugly looking things, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're going to, if you're on the audio, go and have a look at some of these. Go to the show notes, and there's uh, you, you'll be able to link straight to these things. So the Apple introduced the iBook laptop, the first mainstream computer designed and sold with built-in wireless networking. Whoopie doo! And wow. the last, and the last one, amazing, amazing technology. And the last one this week uh, of interest is uh, July 18, 1968. Was Intel was founded? 1968. So these things, you know, it's amazing how long these things have been around. You know, like sixty-eight. Can like, you get Windows on Mac? Well, you could. Yeah. You can put it on. I suppose you can. Isn't? Aren't they all Windows? No, I've got <laughs> Windows running on a Mac. I'm just giving you another debate. Sorry. Because um, aren't all those folders? Every time you open up a folder, it's a window. Yeah. Yeah, so there's Windows on Mac, there's Windows on Linux, there's Windows on everything, isn't there? But didn't Mac come out They're with like Windows, Windows first? The Windows to different parts of whatever's mm. in the computer. But didn't Mac have Windows first and uh, Gate stole it from Steve? Isn't that the yeah, story? <laughs> no, if you're running a version of uh, Mac that has an Intel processor, you can normally run Windows on it. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. No, I think you missed what I was getting at. Um, I was just saying that because everyone, a lot of often people call Microsoft Windows. Yeah, that's right. Yes, well, it's Microsoft. The Windows is just. It's, mm. I would have thought just a, a term of saying Windows, like you know, the Windows. Like I can drag my window. I've got a window for my Edge browser, and I've got a window for my Zoom, and I've got a window for my. Yeah, well, I don't know what. Well, what did what did Mac come? They, well, I think I think Mac didn't probably invent it, but they got the they they saw that they stole the technology as well, and, and but they they sort of made it popular. Steve Gates went around and went, oh, that's a good idea, and he went home with Windows, and Jobs stayed with I don't know folders or folders <laughs> or something, open items on desktops or something. Yeah. Um, but anyway, getting back to Intel, Robert Noyce, Andy Grove, and Gordon Moore incorporate Intel in Santa Clara, California, to build microprocessors. The first processor, the 4004, was released in 1971 for its calculators. IBM's choice of Intel's 8088 processor for use in the IBM PC uh, led to Intel's emergence as the premier manufacturer of processors still to this day. But just goes to show you that, you know, you think of an idea, you can't, it doesn't take off overnight. Like this thing founded Intel. That blew me away. I didn't know Intel was uh, older than me. So there yeah. you go. There you go. That was I've, the... still, I've still got an IBM um, 266 uh, chip with me. What that? What was that out of? Oh, oh geez. What's, what was that out of? A 686-266 six, 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 six. IBM chip. 
Yeah, right. It was out of an old IBM computer. I kept it just for, you know, here's the other here's the other side of it. Yeah, okay. Gee, there's not much going on there, Joe. It's all... Uh, yeah, I mean, I was... I, t- I was I should have kept the machine as well, but I kept the process. I thought, you know, one day this would be really cool to have. Mm. And, um, yeah, I should have kept the machine. I think it was an IBM machine, an IBM computer. You know the ones that's got the little handle that you can pick up with one hand? Yeah, yeah okay. Six. Yeah, right. I used to have a uh, XT, but you, you could hardly pick them up. They were that heavy. The, the hard drive was, I don't know, about 30 centimetres long, and it was about 20 meg or something. Yeah. It was just you needed a wheelbarrow to carry it around. Yeah, it was crazy. They were heavy as as heavy as every anything. But yeah, things are a lot dark, better these Eric, days. Eric um, Eric says on um, on Facebook that laptops uh, laptops will give you ball cancer if you leave it on your lap. Yeah, right. Well, you you don't you don't bloody I don't know put your juggle balls somewhere else. <laughs> but I've been saying the same thing about people driving around with their phones in their laps. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's another thought for you where you're driving around with your phone in your lap out there, people. Well, I think I've said it before. Put your phone in the cradle. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't keep the phone on on myself on my person if I can help it. Like it's not on me now; it's on my desk. You know, because you know you hear these stories. Who knows if they're true? I know uh, you hang around the wrong people. You'll hear stories about the five G. Oh, look, whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. Who knows? But who yeah, knows? Say who that knows? again. If you hang around the wrong people, you'll hear stories about 5G. <laughs> you know, like, there's conspiracies about everything. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I have no idea at all. Uh, no. I think you could be wary of these things. And of like, course. Yeah, and so just like, uh, like, and I, I guess to the point where with the 4G and mobile phones, well, I'm wary to the point where I'll put my phone on aeroplane mode every night and I'll, I, I don't carry it on me. Like, if I'm sitting here at the desk, well, it's, it's on the desk. It's not in my pocket. And That's good that you do that. They reckon you sleep better if you put them on aeroplane mode. Well, I reckon they might be right. So yeah. Well, it's true, yeah, because um, you um, supposed to have it across the other side of the room. Yeah, all right. Those, all those frequencies going around at night. Because the, the the only thing there is with with <laughs> Eric, the, Eric says tin foil heads. <laughs> yes. But like with all the uh, you got to put tin foil around your head before you go to bed, Glenn. Yeah, well, that that are just uh, concentrated. It if, if a if a frequency got trapped inside between the head and the foil. But, oh. <laughs> but uh, I'm saying uh, I don't know what I was saying now. Uh, what I was, uh, yeah, that's right. Put yeah. some tin foil in your lap before you drive around in your car, Eric. <laughs> but with today's like all the technology that you know, there's no landlines these days. So when you go to bed, you turn your phone on the airplane. You are incommunicado. So if there's a, a problem somewhere and someone tries to reach it, they can't. And that's the only thing that goes around in my brain going, well, they can't reach me if, if they need to. No, not unless you turn off your Wi-Fi as well. You leave your Wi-Fi on, don't you? Uh, yes, I do leave the Wi-Fi on. Yep. Yeah, so you get all these messages coming through on your Wi-Fi. But I turn it on, do not disturb as well. Oh, well, that's that's different. Because <laughs> as soon as I go to bed, I am uh, do not disturb. I don't want to. I don't want any of my mates texting me at two a.m. in the morning telling me they found a flower or whatever they're doing. I don't <laughs> want any. I don't want nothing. I don't nothing to do with anything after I go to sleep. I'm out till the morning. Try managing rental properties. Yeah, yeah. Well, he calls it all, all hours of the night. No, nah, don't get paid enough for that sort of stuff. You just uh, turn off. What, what can't wait till the morning? You know, what can't wait till the morning? But, you know, you could just turn off all your Wi-Fis and Bluetooths and everything and just leave your phone on, so to speak. So if somebody really needed to call you as an emergency, they could get through. I don't think your phone's going to use much. It's probably everything else it does, all your Wi-Fi and all that, Mm. your data and everything. I don't know. Anyway, I'm... Anyway, it's time. It's time to uh, get the sharks on. They've already, I'm already ten minutes in. All right. <laughs> so well, uh, nothing happens in the first ten minutes anyway. You know that. Oh, Harley the sharks five tries. Yeah, let's. <laughs> I hope so. It'll be good if I turn that on and they're, they're twenty points up. But they've been going crap lately, which is no good. So, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll turn it on. In well, a then that's ten minutes less of crap you'll have to watch, and you'll be happy about it. No. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you guys finished with stories? That's it for me. All right, good on you, Joe. There's nothing uh, we can't do next week, I don't think. Unless I've right. got anything fun. I can't see anything. No, good. We're, 
We're over only, t- that, you, only that look out in September for the Samsung Galaxy Fold. I think they reckon it's going to happen. So keep your eye out for that, folks. Right. Maybe not in Australia, but it's, it's that's a sure sign it's not far off. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for downloading and listening to us. Uh, once again, thanks if you watched on the YouTube. Thanks for putting up with us on the uh, Facebook Live with that damn echo, which I'm going to try and tweak again this week. Uh, yeah, I and think we've lost a few customers tonight because of that. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I'll have to... Uh, I, I do have a test facebook page i can set up and i might try and play some i know music so i can sort of back, bounce it back to myself so i can hear what's going on i'll try and do something more a bit more serious this time uh and uh yeah so thanks everyone for for supporting the the show supporting our sponsors to start a new company and ath web hosting and it all goes back into the show to try and uh keep it going <laughs> every week don't forget the Aussie Tech Radio I've got to do that tonight before I go uh, as well alright thanks Jordan thanks Joe uh, have a good week and we'll no see worries. we'll see you guys next time alright bye bye for now cheers bye bye ciao